Hey, greetings everyone, GleeCon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. Stay a while and listen to this one, which is called The Breath of Rookmar. Um, no added date to this one, so it seems like this is just a continuation of the last uh, episode that we were on, which was the beginning of the battle, the giant titan thing, um, Tala, baby spore mound has been risen by Gnarlgar and his gnarled treant minions sent out. They've been whooping on the apex as they killed half of their people, or their forces at least, um, and they ran off to do to develop this Breath of Rookmar, this me mega solar flare, laser, flamethrower thing, I don't know. So let's find out what happens with that in this one, the Breath of Rookmar. The Apexes watch the primal slowly approach, the awakened spore mound silhouetted on the horizon like some massive titan in the background. The Inari's weapon was not yet finished, and they feared they could not complete it before their enemies reached the spire. The Arakoa were doomed. A small number of brave Skalaxi sorcerers were not ready to give up. They volunteered to waylay the primals and give their Inari allies the time they needed to complete the Breath of Rukmar. During their defeat in Talador, these sorcerers had discovered Narlgar and learned of the trans ability to guide the actions of the Batani and other creatures. If they could assassinate the primal's leader, the Skalaxi sorcerers would deal a great blow to their enemies. Yeah, they would essentially um, just, he's the person that's motivating all of it and it is their communication. That would be a huge blow. The Skalaxi shrouded themselves in shadow to elude the approaching primal army. That's cool. They're like uh, rogues in that sense too. They're like assassins. They reached Talador and stalked unseen through the forest until they found Narlgar. Just before the sorcerers launched their attack, Narlgar sensed their presence. The enraged treant broke away from its trance and quickly disposed of the Skalaxi, but not before the sorcerers had bent their dark powers against the creature. Um, again, we've mentioned this multiple times, this concept of the Arakoa moving in and out of the Shadow Realm, um, the Veil of Shadows and stuff like that is a big part of their uh, quest lines and, and their culture. A curse bloomed within Narlgar. The creeping rot spread to the treant's roots and boughs. Narlgar withered into a blackened husk and collapsed beside the bodies of its assassins. Another thing I like here is, and this kind of goes to how the warlock class and, and the Forsaken and, and these various elements in the conflict that are that are quote unquote dark. Um, are used for righteous causes, are used in the cause of good. So I do like that, that just by something being inherently death, decay, darkness, it doesn't necessarily have a correlation. It's not mutually exclusive from being good. Narogar's death broke the unity of the primals. Confusion rippled through Tala and its kin. For a time, the primals halted at the edge of Arak before continuing their march. Destroying Narlgar had only delayed the primals, but it was enough for the Arakoa priests to finish their work. Just as Tala reached the spire, the Inari ignited their weapon. A violent tremor shook the spire as fierce energies roared through the breath of Rukmar. A beam of white-hot fire exploded from the mechanism and lanced through Tala's chest. The Inari weapon blew the spore mound apart in a cloud of ember and ash. The Inari then turned their wrath on the rest of the primals. The breath of Rukmar sliced through the Batani, the Gnarled, and the Genosaur, incinerating thousands in the blink of an eye. The few primals who remained retreated back to Talador in terror. The Inari gave no quarter. They engulfed the fleeing primals in flames, and they scoured the forests that had crept into Arak. Once the Arakoa halted their attack, the blackened earth and smoldering roots stretched out from the spire, as far as the eye could see. I wonder where the spire is. I wonder if the spire is the base of Oshindun. I'm not sure. The Apex's victory permanently blunted the might of nature. The Evergrowth would never return again in any form. A new golden age of mortal civilization dawned on Draenor. So, it cost all of the shadow um, Arakoa for the most part, which are, and, it, and so basically like three quarters of the Arako are, are defeated and what's left are the ones that are, um, the Inari, which are the closest to like the holy kind, you don't see those at all. Um, 
that's the one that's least referred to. So there's definitely something that's gone on with them. And I wonder what they evolve to, where they go. Um, but this time, once and for all, they're fully defeated. So finally, we can stop warring with the plants. All right, guys, another episode in the pipes, five by five. I look forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Lore of Warcraft. Thanks for listening.